Welcome back guys. In this particular teaching video, I'll be looking at 2.6 modelling with quadratics. 2.6 represents chapter 2, section 6 of the Pearson A-Level Maths, Pure Maths Year 1 textbook. So, over here I've got an exam style question, which is a modelling question. Modelling involving quadratics. A spear is thrown over level ground from the top of a tower. The height in metres of the spear above the ground after t seconds is modelled by the function h of t equal 12.25 plus 14.7 t minus 4.9 t squared where t is greater than or equal to zero okay so we have a restriction why is this restriction valid well time can never be negative time is always greater than or equal to zero okay so before i stop part a b c and d i'm going to actually model this scenario via a coordinate grid so first of all what i want to do is work out the h intercept to work out the h-intercept, I need to substitute t equals 0 into this particular function. So if I substitute t equals 0, the outcome will be 12.25. Now, this function, if I look at the coefficient of t squared, it is minus 4.9. Hence, the function represents a negative quadratic. So my graph will look something like this, okay? Negative quadratic. Notice that for t is less than 0, that part of the curve I have not sketched because this function is defined for t is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so if you have a look at this quadratic graph, it has a turning point over here. Shorthand, tp. The way we find the coordinate of the turning point is to complete the square on our quadratic. So we're going to do that later on. Part A. Interpret the meaning of the constant term 12.25 in this model. Okay, so 12.25, what does that represent in context? Well, it is just the height of the tower. Here's my spit. At time t equals 0, the height, according to the function, is 12.25. So we haven't really thrown the spit at time t equals 0. So at time t equals 0, our h is 12.25. That represents the height of the tower. Okay, so part A, 12.25 metres represents the height of the tower. Okay, moving on to part B. After how many seconds does the spear hit the ground? So if you go back to the diagram, the spear will hit the ground over here. And at this particular point, the height is equal to zero. Okay, the spear is on the ground, the height is equal to zero. So, hits the ground implies that h of t is equal to zero. So, we have to set our function, which is the quadratic function, equal to zero. Now this particular quadratic function, we can solve it using the quadratic formula. So, over here, my a is the coefficient of t squared, which is minus 4.9. My b is the coefficient of t, which is 14.7. And my c is the constant term, which is 12.25. So I can substitute my a, b and c into the quadratic formula. So the solution t is given by minus b, which is 14.7 plus or minus square root b squared, so 14.7 squared, minus 4 multiplied by a, which is minus 4.9, multiplied by c, which is 12.25. This whole thing, we're going to divide it by two lots of a, so two lots of minus 4.9. Okay, so that there's the quadratic formula. Now, I can put this into my calculator and round off to, for example, three significant figures. So if I round to three significant figures, I end up with t equal minus 0 0.679, free SF, t equal 3.68, free SF. Okay, so the time is in seconds. Now, because time can't be negative, we need to reject this negative solution. We take this time over here. Okay, so the spear hits the ground after 3.68 seconds. Okay. 
That completes part B. Let's move on to part C. Uh, so in part C, we need to uh, write the function h of t in the form a minus b. So we have bracket t minus c squared. That there is complete the square form. Okay, so we're going to rewrite this using complete the square to give us this. Okay, right, so part C. H of t is equal 12.25 plus 14.7t minus 4.9t squared. Okay, now before I complete the square, I'm going to rewrite this quadratic in the following form. Minus 4.9t squared plus 14.7t plus 12.25. Okay, you can only complete the square if the coefficient of your squared term, so the t squared term, was 1. Over here, it is minus 4.9. So the very first step is to take out a factor of minus 4.9 before we complete the square. So we take out a factor of minus 4.9. In bracket, so we've got t squared minus 3t, close bracket, plus we've got the 12.25 on the outside. Okay, so now if you look at what we have inside the bracket, which is t squared minus 3t, the coefficient of t squared is 1. So we can now complete the square. So I've got minus 4.9, introduce square bracket, bracket squared, minus bracket squared, close the square bracket, plus 12.25 on the outside. Okay, so inside this bracket, I'm going to put t, the minus 3, which is the coefficient of t, I need to divide that by 2. So if I do that, I get minus 1.5. And that minus 1.5, I stick it into this bracket as well. Okay, so now I need to clean this up, ladies and gents. I've got minus 4.9 square bracket, t minus 1.5 squared minus, so I've got minus 1.5. If I square that, this gives me 2.25. Close the square bracket plus 12.25. Five. Okay, so what is the next step? Well, the next step is to expand the minus 4.9 with what I have inside the square bracket. Classic mistake, you don't take the minus 4.9 and multiply it by 12.25. You don't do that because the 12.25 is on the outside. It's not inside the square bracket. So be careful. Okay, so if I expand, I get minus 4.9 in front of t minus 1.5 squared and then I've got plus 11.025 plus the 12.25 so now I can add these two numbers together so if I add these two numbers together I end up with 23.275 minus the 4.9 uh, t minus 1.5 inside the bracket squared okay so let's start comparing this here is in this form as required so what is the a b and c okay so the a is going to be 23.275 the b is going to be 4.9 not minus 4.9 it is 4.9 we're looking at b not the negative so 4.9 the c is going to be 1.5 okay and that there completes part c of the question okay now part d juicy using your answer to part c or otherwise find the maximum height of the spear above the ground and the time at which this maximum height is reached so here's my spear it travels in such a way and then it hits the ground over here now the spear will reach a maximum height at this position. We want to work out this maximum height. Well, the way we work out the maximum height is to go back to our complete the square form. So in our complete the square form, the outer number is the maximum height. This one here, 23.275. That there's the maximum height, okay? So max height, is equal 23.275 meters. 
Okay, now to work out the time at which this maximum occurs, what I need to do is whatever I've got inside the bracket, I set it equal to zero and then I'll solve. So I've got t minus 1.5 and I set that equal to zero. This gives me t equal 1.5. So the time at which this maximum occurs is 1.5 seconds. Okay. So the time at which the maximum height 23.275 meters is achieved is therefore 1.5 seconds. Okay, that there completes part D. And the overall question. One tip that I'll give you guys for modeling with quadratic questions is to start off by drawing a coordinate grid and draw the curve. Once you've drawn your curve, everything makes a lot more sense. When they ask you about max and min, etc., what you should do is label the coordinate of the turning point that tells you what your max will be. In this case, 23.275 meters, and the time at which this maximum is achieved, that is 1.5 seconds. Now, if you found this video useful, please don't forget to subscribe.